Hello everybody, I'm Henry Lee. Welcome to my channel of Chinese brush painting. Today I like to paint an eagle catching a fish um, based on a great photograph taken by Jerry Berry, my long-term Facebook friend. I'm also broadcasting this live on Facebook, which uh, Jerry will have a chance to watch it uh, live or later. Um, so I'm going to paint with a Chinese brush uh, on rice paper. This paper is actually called the mulberry paper, um, mulberry bark paper, Piju. Um, it's very tough, uh, so it can be um, painted very regularly. And uh, I, I use the style um, guide here. Uh, by Master Xu Bei Hong. He, he was uh, the uh, greatest uh, artist in painting horses and also very good at eagle. He was uh, uh, a realistic uh, uh, master in Chinese uh, contemporary art in the 20th century, greatest uh, educator also. It's a lot of followers. And I have a lesson um, on eagle, if you like to study more of uh, um, the history of Chinese brush painting on specific uh, subject matters. And the website is uh, ChineseBrushPainting.ling.com. I'll add a link to the video description later. So, um, um, to start with, uh, we, we could use uh, charcoal to sketch, but I like to uh, do it uh, freehand, just see how it works. Uh, but uh, before that, I I would you know draw some uh, uh, placement guide. Just use my fingernail and imagine the strokes I'm going to 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 do. So specifically, the how big the the. Uh, the width, maximum width and the height is like that. And you may you may draw some blocks just uh, with fingernails. And just you know, you you don't paint until you see the image in your mind. Right? In the in the original photograph, this uh, this eagle is uh, like leveled, everything's leveled. I may uh, change it uh, somehow to uh, make it more um, painterly, not like a photograph. So it's best to paint from memory, but uh, let me start with a realistic sketch of the, the head part. Uh, this is the uh, important part I, I want to do it in detail. So I use a, um, it's a uh, basic uh, basic wolf hair brush from the basic three set and the inconvenient ink cake. Um, you can also use ink, you know, maybe I, I'll use it. But this one is uh, um, thicker, you know, when I need uh, to have more body in it. So maybe I combine the two if I need. We start from the pupil right away. So um, let's just start the pupil and draw a little circle around it. It could be a little squarish, not don't have to be very um, wrong. And uh, the uh, powerful mouth, stylized a little bit. It's a bald, bald eagle, so with a white hair, that's a little bit tricky. So I would just uh, use, have to use brush. The brush I'm using is my uh, uh, recent favorite uh, wrist hair brush. Uh, you can see I can shape the brush however I want, um, but I need to soak the brush in water first. And then you can use a paper towel to adjust the moisture, so especially the, the, the 
the bottom of the the brush don't have to be wet if you don't want uh, to bleed. This this uh, paper is semi-sized, so it, uh, you can use the the moisture to uh, to draw some uh, to wet the dampen the paper a little bit maybe to uh, to get soft edge if you want. <coughs> So I, I will use a little bit, a little bit ink just to the to the uh, brush, very dry brush, and then uh, kind of draw the the outline of the white fur, a white uh, feather, and I concentrate on the uh, the shape of the the um, the block. The, the, uh, the group of oh, not the individual feathers. And you can shade a little bit the under the chin. You can see why I start from the the, the dark. Uh, when the brush gets uh, dry, I just keep keep uh, um, using it, so you will get a natural uh, gradation of uh, colors. I don't have to reload until it is really exhausted, and I use a very uh, light, very light, uh, uh, even water, just you know, to give me some uh, hint for the coming strokes. I don't like to use pencil, it will limit my uh, strokes. Could be a little exaggerated to be a little thicker. And uh, my reference uh, for Scott, the style is this. So it's a combination of a uh, line and uh, direct um, calligraphy strokes. On the, on the for the shoulder part, I want to draw the, the line. So it could be uh, lost in the front lines. Don't have to be continuous, but the idea should be con uh, continuous, not uh, the chi should. Connect. I just stand to see the when I paint large, I should stand. Okay, now um, let's uh, take the risk. To use gray ink, so I'm not um, using the liquid yet. I just keep using this uh, because I have more control on this. Because, uh, due to the the uh, uh, semi-sized kind of uh, absorbency of this paper, so I don't need much ink, unlike uh, double shine or more absorbent uh, uh, unsized rice paper. You, you need to load the brush more with moisture and ink. So this is more um, like a thirsty brush, but I dampened a little bit the, the paper so I can get a soft effect. I kind of stay away from the line, you know, if I don't want to, to let it blur 
Very clear. Leave a, leave, a, leave a room there. This is secondary line web tether. I don't have to count, but it's good to know the number. There's 13 of them, and then 10 or 11 uh, primaries. So this is the... When I feel right, I just go direct to... This is another part into inner secondary, what do we call it? This side. I need to put the ink here so you can see. We need some contrast to make the, the board head standing out. Negative painting. Did it. This this brush can be used sideways, or you can use like a um, like a hacky hacky brush. You can you can make the brush flat. And many people ask me, certain watercolorist using Chinese brush painting like a flat brush, you just have to, uh, first of all, shape it, and then uh, make sure you use it in, in, the, um, in this direction, or you know, don't use all the, the sides, but one side, so you can keep that shape. Um, I, I think the brush is really designed, the round brush is really designed to, to be used all uh, eight directions, maybe. Not just the um, one direction. So in Chinese paint, authentic Chinese painting, we use it. To, uh, we use all parts of the the brush, not just the, the flat. Okay, here uh, I try to to do the <coughs> the powerful, the tricky part. Um, I'll use a little bit liquid ink. You do this side first. So this is you have to use the the, the gesture. Feel feel the, the air like that. Okay. Just like an orchid, orchid leaves is the side of the brush. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe seven strokes in a row. This one should be getting longer, bigger. Don't worry about the, the uh, assemblies. Uh, the semblance is it should be you know, it's, every stroke should have the the uh, chi of its uh, its own the vitality of it and it's from your your own movement. I use very um, 
that ink very economically. That I didn't put a lot of ink, just uh, one drop of ink. I don't um, got uh, too much ink on my brush. Students always uh, load too much ink. So they, they don't like the, the paper, everything they do on the rice paper. Um, this is hard to control though. So if you use a thirsty brush, there's no pattern, but uh, I think uh, um, the master, she has this, uh, this added uh, stroke I like. This dots. And you can even do this uh, stem. I don't know. I call it stem. And I have to exaggerate a little bit from the photograph if there's no, um, this, this part is shorter, but uh, then just exaggerate a little bit. So we've got rough edge here as well. Very powerful mess. Wet in wet, wet into wet to get the fairy if, um, leather feathery effect. Okay, and uh, go back to the the, the small brush. <clears throat> to do the the fish and the and the claws. Oops, I think 